Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is America's Commercial Real Estate Show. This segment is brought to you by Build Out, the best marketing for your brokerage. Visit buildout.com. We use them. Great service. Check it out. Well, today we're talking about senior housing. Now we're going to get a view from an active broker who's dealing in the senior housing market every day. Please welcome Ernie Anaya. He's Senior VP of Healthcare Real Estate Services with Bull Realty, and his practice is very much focused on senior housing. Ernie, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me, Michael. Well, Ernie, you're, as I said, you're every day you're with buyers and sellers of these senior housing uh, properties. You're also working with new developers. What's the market right now? Is it is it still a seller's market? Is it a buyer's market? What are you seeing out there? It's still a seller's market. Uh, mm -hmm. The issue has become that uh, because of the inching up of uh, interest rates, cap rates are inching up. Uh, a few years ago, they used to be in the six range. Now they're inching up seven, seven and a half. Um, so the cap rates. They, yeah. The cap rates. So mm -hmm. because of that, uh, there is a little bit of confusion from sellers that used to think they could get the 6% or 6% cap or 6.5% cap that they had a couple of years ago. Um, but still, uh, any property that comes to market, you're definitely going to get a significant number of buyers interested in it. The issue becomes, are you more realistic in accepting what the market is dictating from a cap perspective? Yeah, and that's right. And, and, and if the market is moving and interest rates are, everyone expects to, you know, to tick up even more, uh, well, maybe you don't like the six and a half. Maybe if you have to take seven, seven and a half now, but heck, it sounds like that might increase further in the next couple of years and may go up higher if interest and, rates and, go higher. And that is a great point, Michael, yeah. because uh, interest rates are continuing to go higher. Mm -hmm. So what value today might be value less in six months from now. Yeah. So, and uh, in the value of some of these properties that might be $23 million, mm -hmm. that could be a million dollars in loss value if they wait. So yeah. uh, it's, a, it's the thing about being realistic about what the market is dictating. And that is also being driven by the major uh, investors, uh, institutional investors like REITs, that are definitely looking at that from an investment perspective. Yeah, and what about existing owners of existing properties? How much does it matter how old their properties are? I know I just picked uh, from several properties, and I picked a real new one for my mother. Does that? How should you think about the decision to maybe to hold or sell uh, based on the age of your property? So one of the things, one of the statistics that I just pulled out um, is that, uh, especially in Metro Atlanta, is that for properties that are less than two years old, they're growing in occupancy by 56% when the majority of the older properties are either flat or growing negatively. Uh, and if you look at the average uh, age of those facilities, uh, it's about 18 to 20 years old, but that's also across the United States. You're looking at an average of 18-year-old property. Uh, so the issue, especially in, in a state like Georgia, is that uh, the new regulations uh, have kept 90% of those properties from being licensed as an assisted living but are licensed as personal care homes because they're not meeting the code by the state that requires fire sprinklers and everything like that. But the bigger thing is, if you're putting your mother in a, in a new place, do you want it to look like the, the Rich Carlton or do you want it to look like a, you know, a shabby little place that you don't want to be there? <laughs> uh, so that's, that's key yeah. because that's also uh, creating a lot of downward pressure on occupancy as well as rates. Yeah, well, I want it to look like the Ritz Carlton, but I want a Motel 6 rate. How about that? And, and that, that is possible yeah. because it's all about uh, your market. For instance, uh, last year I sold a smaller piece of uh, property, 22 units, mm -hmm. that was converted into memory care in East Cobb. Well, um, that is now going as a memory care uh, by a major operator, and they're going to be charging 7500 for the rent. So it's all about where you are at. So yeah. the 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 demographics of that particular location between maybe five, 10 mile radius, depending on where you are, is gonna dictate what is it, the Ritz Carlton or is it more like the, the Holiday Inn? Right, and let's talk about that a minute, Ernie, because you know we just heard from uh, Beth and uh, George that in some markets, uh, there's a little bit of overbuilding uh, and some people, some lenders are a little concerned with it. 
Um, but uh, when you're doing analysis, uh, it, I guess it really does matter. What is the income uh, in that area, right? Because a lot of people want to stay pretty close to home, right? I, like, I want my mother as close as possible so I can see her more often. I don't get that call. When are you going to come see me, son? And, and that is a great <laughs> uh, point because if you look at the statistics, um, residents of assisted living or senior housing stay within a 10-mile radius normally because they have ties to the church, to the community, to their families. They don't, mm -hmm. want, to, they don't want to move very far away. So they want to stay in that area. But the, the key, too, is that uh, when you look at overbuilt, that's, that's correct. Some areas are more overbuilt than others. Uh, but looking at uh, the age of the facilities is one uh, way to do it, but also looking at the met demand and also the demographics. So when you look at the met demand, you can say, okay, I want to look at the met demand for people making 35000 or higher, or I can look at it 75000 or higher. So you can dictate you know, how you look at that market and make a decision whether what type of property should I build there and do I really should build there or not. Okay. So if I'm a multifamily developer and I want to do senior housing, or maybe I have a site that I think is great for senior housing, for a fee, can you come in and, and look at the demographics and the competition and the market and let me know if it's really feasible? Yes, basically what we do is that we have the analysis uh, methodology that basically we can look at the different cohorts of ages. So you have 65, 75, 75 making over um, 50,000 and then 85 plus. Uh, and then look at uh, the demographics as far as home values, because that's key, net worth, uh, and also household income. So that will give you kind of like the, um, the main market. And then from there, you use um, the penetration rates for the country. And that would yield, here's basically your demand. And then from there, you go and go to a place like NICMAP and try to find out, okay, what's in that market right now? What's the occupancy, how many units, how many units are being planned uh, for development? And then from there, you determine this is the OMED demand. Uh, so if you have an, a high OMED demand, that's a good thing. But you also have to have the demographic income to support it. Because if you don't have it, you're not going to be successful either. Right. And if that sounded like Charlie Brown's parents to you, then just <laughs> give you a call and, and you can explain it further. Definitely. I'd, be lo I'd love to Maybe to help. Help, help out. So, so if you will, before you have to go, Ernie, give me a tip for somebody that maybe owns an older uh, property should, and they're thinking about that they need to kind of make a decision because technology is changing of what they're going to do with this property, that they need to probably do something if they're – their rates are going down and their occupancy is, is going down, right? One of the biggest um, things that are not being met today in, in today's market is the need of the middle income uh, resident. Uh, that's being ignored completely. And uh, one of the things that if you're going to have a facility built next to you uh, that is going to look very nice uh, as compared to yours and yours is 20 years old, you're going to feel the pain. <laughs> uh, so the best thing to do is maybe to uh, reposition those properties into more of a middle income and now accept the three thousand uh, thirty five hundred dollars per month or whatever it is for that particular market but now you have the ability to, to fill it and uh, because they're already personal care homes you don't have to have the amount of um, staffing and everything else that you need for assisted living mm -hmm. uh, but you're still um, creating uh, a nice business and you're taking care of a market that uh, or market semi that you're completely ignoring today. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're saying uh, have flexibility and realize that, hey, maybe you're not going to get that uh, 4000 a month or 4500 a month. Maybe you've got to drop it down and, and be realistic or, or maybe sell it before you have to, to drop the numbers and go build a new one. No, that's correct. So one interesting example today is that we're actually working with a client um, that has an older facility. It's 24 uh, units. Um, they're for assisted living. Uh, and it's also licensed for uh, on their personal care home for uh, memory care. But because of the rent, they're kind of like under the market. We have uh, decided to uh, convert it to 100% memory care uh, to put it in the market at a higher cost, uh, higher value. Uh, so if you look at uh, going from maybe 3,000 a month to 4,000 because of memory care, memory care being at 5,000 a month in, in our market, you will have that place filled, especially after we did an analysis like you just said, yeah. where we determined that within a five mile radius, there was 108 of met demand of income uh, residents uh, over $75,000. Yeah. 
So that's kind of like a no-brainer. So that's another opportunity. It's kind of like, how can, can you do highest and best and convert it to memory care? Memory care is one of the um, most uh, hottest uh, growth areas within senior housing. Yeah. Yeah, well, it makes sense, and uh, you know that's pretty valuable that you can go out and provide that information for me because maybe I want to to pay you for consulting now. Maybe I don't want to sell, and maybe you're getting it ready for me to sell in a year from now as I convert it, right? Correct. And one of the biggest things, especially for um, operators that are smaller, mm -hmm. is that they don't understand how to evaluate their property. Mm -hmm. um, they don't understand what the market demand is. They don't understand what cap rates are. They, they cannot do the underwriting uh, for the facilities. They don't have a way to find out what are the sales comps for that particular market. So sometimes they're not getting the best value out of the property. Uh, so if we work with them and teach them here's, and do the analysis and, and show them here's what you could get uh, for your property, then they, ha they are in a better situation to uh, negotiate a better price. Yeah, and, and, and plan for the future. Well, Ernie, great information. Thank you for joining well, us. Well, thank you for having me, Michael. And thank you for joining us out there on the radio stations, iTunes, YouTube, or the show website. We really appreciate you being with us. And if you will, comment, subscribe, uh, share, and uh, we sure appreciate connecting with you. And, and be sure and join us next week. And until then, be sure you always lead, learn, and laugh, and join us for America's Commercial Real Estate Show.